I remember, I remember in high school, people always telling me I'd make a great used car salesman, which I don't know if that was a compliment or meant to be, you know, making fun of me or not. But it was, it was true. Um, for some reason, I was really, really blessed in that job. It came to a point, and I remember there was, there was one August, where it was one of my best months, and I, I got paid in every, the first week of the next month, we always sit down with our manager, we kind of talk about the month we had, where we want to improve, what we did well, things like that. And I remember sitting there and I, I told him, I go, you know man, this is more money than I ever thought I could make, and I'm not happy. This is not what I'm supposed to do. Like, I, was, I was called into ministry a long time ago, and I gotta, I gotta follow that through. Like I don't, I don't want to quit, but I have to do that. Jesus took 30 years to prepare himself for a three-year ministry, and so I can't expect God to push me into ministry until I'm ready, which I truthfully hated because I felt like so long ago God had called me into ministry. So why am I not in ministry? You know, why am I not there? But I knew. You know, I knew at some point he was gonna kind of lead me there. I just didn't like being patient. It really, I didn't, I didn't want to be selling cars anymore. I wanted to be in ministry. I would see things go on here at Fountain Springs and I'd be so envious. About eight months ago, nine months ago, I, I had been approached by a couple of the managers about possibly being a manager. And so I just, I thought about that and I was like, man, going from especially where I was four or five years ago, where I was part-time at the YMCA, you know, making $9 an hour, I couldn't pay any bills, to this job where it was, it was success. Like I never saw myself as, as a success story and that would have been like true success. Um, but I also would have had to give up, I think, on what God was doing for me here. The day they kind of asked me, they're like, you know, we've we've been talking about different managers and, and people who would be one and have you considered doing it. Um, I told them, you guys should not invest in me because I want to be in ministry and so I don't think I'll be here much longer. And uh, that was really difficult because I then had to watch other people get asked to take that job. And there was a part of me that was like, that was my job. Like, I should have, I should have done that. But I, uh, I, I knew, you know, this is where God wanted me, and this is where He was leading me, and uh, I didn't want to give that up. That was in that was in March, and in May, Todd had asked me one time. He's like, Hey, do you want to go to lunch this week? Right away we sat down, he asked me, he goes, you know, I am the, they're starting this campus on the east side. He's like, they're going to be, you know, really laying the foundation coming up soon and, and they've asked me to be the campus pastor and I want to ask you if, if you'd be willing to be my ne next steps director. It kind of hit me one that like, okay, God actually did plan on me being here. This is what he wanted me to do. The, the moves I was making, the chances I was, I was letting go at McKee or other places, those were all to set up, this is what God wanted me to do. It's kind of scary sometimes when you decide, I want to I wanna follow what God's doing. Like, I, I want to listen, I want to follow. Because sometimes there's that question when stuff doesn't go the way you think it's going to go, that maybe I'm not following him. Maybe I'm not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And you kind of start questioning, and and I had I had a lot of questions at that point. I wasn't sure if I was if I was actually you know following him. And so there was a lot of relief in the fact that okay, everything actually is working out the way God wants it to.